to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York. We are celebrating today the 19th Sunday after Pentecost and the first Sunday in October, in person and online. However you've joined us, please know that your presence always enriches our worship. This worship video is being broadcast on Facebook Live and will be uh, uploaded immediately onto our Facebook page and later to our YouTube page, which is accessible at our website. I encourage everyone to participate however you're able. Today's gospel combines a saying that makes many of us uncomfortable with a story we find comforting. Jesus saying on divorce is another of his rejections of human legislation in favor of the original intent of God's law. Jesus' rebuke of the disciples who are fending up children should challenge us as well. What does it mean to receive the kingdom of God as a child does? I invite you now into a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Please stand as you're able. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes us, makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 769. Hymn number 769. If you but trust in God to guide you, we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and stanzas 1, 3, and 4.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated. A reading from Genesis. The Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read Psalm 8 responsively. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even verses. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the fall of your angels. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are their mortals, mortals that, that you should, should be mindful of them? them? Human beings that, that you should care for them. them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have you made, made them rule over the works of your hands. You have, you have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds, the birds of the air, air the fish of the sea. sea. And whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, last, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he will also create the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than others. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but somehow, someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, 
subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sacrifices and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about the matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. When I was growing up, there was a family that lived next door who had a girl my age. Her name was also Debbie. However, that is where our similarities ended. Our mothers would both dress us up and send us out to play together pretty much for most of the day. And as my mother would often complain, the other Debbie would come home at the end of each day just as clean as she was that morning. I, on the other hand, well, I was usually covered in dirt from head to toe. My dress was often ripped, my knee was scraped, and far too many times my little glasses were broken. I don't know how it happened, but I do know 
that I truly enjoy playing in a song. The truth is, life can be pretty messy, whether you're an eight-year-old or a 38-year-old. Life is rarely ordered, pretty, and sensible, even though we sometimes convince ourselves that it is. When we're dealing with people, we're dealing with relationships. And when we're dealing with relationships, you'd better believe that it's messy. Or as sometimes people post when announcing a relationship status on Facebook, it's complicated. I think even Martin Luther would say, this is most certainly true, considering we're both sinners and saints at the very same time. As the late Reverend Sharon Lazard once wrote, we are a complicated mess of humanity. And were it not for God's mindfulness of us, for God in the flesh, showing up and walking with us, it would surely be much more complicated than we already make it. The good news is that God does love us and always cares for us and refuses to give up on any of us. End quote. Still, the gospel message for today is pretty difficult to hear and it's not so easy to read either. There aren't many of us today who haven't either experienced divorce firsthand or have known someone who has. I've experienced divorce myself more than once. Sure, I can try to explain it all away, but the truth is I have sinned. You see, sin is anything that separates us from God. And broken relationships have the tendency to do just that. As Martin Luther taught, we are all guilty of sin. There is no hierarchy of separation from God, no 50 shades of sinfulness. This is why confession is so important. God hears our cries, and the Spirit is here to help us, to turn from separation toward restoration with God. Being able to do so in community is a gift that can offer both support and strength. Broken relationships come in many different forms through a host of different situations, from single folk who've never married, estranged friends, members of the LGBTQIA plus community, widows and widowers, children of divorce, abused spouses, and those who remain unhappily married. Thankfully, there are those among us whose strong and committed relationships bear witness to what God desires and intends for all of our relationships. Now, those Pharisees always seem interested in following the letter of the law. Jesus, however, looks through the lens of grace beyond the law to the pursuit of justice and inclusion of the vulnerable and the marginalized. At the time, those most on the margins without power or options would have been women and children. Today, the marginalized can be found in many situations, in poor households and declining neighborhoods, in the LGBTQIA plus community, especially the youth, in people of color who for generations have lived in poverty without the ability to get ahead, in young people everywhere who are committing suicide in growing numbers, often because of the bullying they receive in person or on social media, and the list goes on. Who else might be vulnerable in our society today? Jesus, 
and shifts the conversation. From speaking about divorce and the injustice it creates, especially for women, to his constant concern for children who have been and continue to be one of the most marginalized groups in our communities. Even though most children in North America and other industrialized nations enjoy a fairly good life, they're still completely dependent on adults for a safe and healthy upbringing, which includes basically everything, physically, mentally, spiritually, food, clothing, and a roof over their heads, guidance, encouragement, forgiveness, and love, baptism, and Sunday school at church, as well as prayer and faithful guidance at home. Jesus tells his disciples, including us, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Well, I think that's a pretty tall order. To do so, we must be first willing to strip away all our protective adult layers and comfort zones so that we're able to approach Jesus with the openness, trust, and yes, the faith of a child. Perhaps even willing to get a little messy. To be insiders, we must be outsiders. To be first, we must be last. We must drown our broken hearts and lives daily to rise refreshed and renewed for the journey ahead. Finally, we must seek ways to heal our broken relationships, even when they can't be exactly what they once were. Of course, forgiveness doesn't mean that folks aren't held accountable for their actions. When we're able to forgive, healing takes place in us, perhaps even more so than the one forgiven. Finally, we must try to use our gifts and blessings as individuals and as a congregation to help others heal maintain and strengthen their relationship with God. What would it be like to approach life and faith as a little child? I'm reminded of an incident that happened several years ago. My assisting minister at the time had her little granddaughter with her one Sunday. Some of you may even remember. Throughout worship, the little girl stayed right by her grandma's side. After serving communion, my assistants and acolytes gathered near the altar, and I quickly gave each a communion wafer. It was only after I'd given one to the little girl that I realized she was meant to receive a blessing instead. And for just a fraction of a second, I considered taking it back. But then I saw the wonder and amazement in her face, her little face just looking at that wafer and at me with surprise and amazement, and my thoughts quickly vanished. If only we who have grown accustomed to receiving could approach God's holy meal with the wonder and amazement of a little child. Perhaps that's what Jesus is talking about, being open and welcoming, willing to show our emotions, willing to risk looking uncool in front of others. Today, Jesus teaches us to come to him remembering our own vulnerability and our own sinful nature and that we're neither that we've neither worked for nor deserve what he so freely offers and at the same time we're taught to remember the true gift of god's love and grace 
in Jesus. In worship, during our time of confession and through the cup of blessing and bread of new life, our sins are forgiven. We are made saints once more with new opportunities each day to grow in faith and love, reconcile to a deeper relationship with God and with one another. Martin Luther defined the word saint as a forgiven sinner. And we are called saints, not because we change into something different, but rather because our relationship with God changes as a result of God's grace. As Martin Luther said, the saints are sinners too, but they are forgiven and pardoned. Today and always, let us endeavor to approach God with humble and reconciling hearts, accepting forgiveness and offering it to others. We are forgiven and free to be like a child, unafraid to get messy, to let our tears flow without shame, to speak, to rest, to even play with God, and to receive the Lord's Supper with wonder and amazement for the holy gift that it truly is. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 708. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Hymn number 708. I invite you to stand as your angel. <laughs> promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. After the words, Lord, in your mercy, you may respond. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history, empowered those discerning a call to ministry, and all seminarians that continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation, revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we celebrate and support one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability and all who suffer in any way. We pray especially for those in our prayer list and those we name now out loud or in our hearts. We pray for the congregation of St. Paul's. We pray for our families, our children, especially our children, and for teachers and children who have gone back to school. For all those who suffer from addiction. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable for everyone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us and keep us mindful of their continued role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen us, especially in our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. prayers. Receive these prayers of God and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. with you. We're not quite safe enough to be shaking hands and hugging each other just yet, but we can and should offer one another a sign of God's peace, especially to those around us with a nod of the head, a hand over our heart, a bow, a peace sign, a wave, a smile that reaches our eyes, whatever way that you would want to offer someone God's peace. And whether we're participating in person or online, we should also reach out to those who are not able to be here to our family and friends, our loved ones who are home. And that can be done in a variety of ways, with a phone call, a card, a letter, an email, or a text. We can reach out to others and offer to them the love and peace of God. of our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can get even a little more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let us be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
God of abundance. You cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts which you have first given us. Unite them with the offerings of our life to nourish the world you love so dearly through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, you never promised that the way would be clear or easy. You have, however, created us in your image, the image of one who is wisdom, who is love, who is courage. You breathe your life into us with the assurance that we have within and around us everything we need to be your faithful people. Though we sometimes act in disregard for your call on our collective life, still you show up with and for us relentlessly. And so we join with all the saints who have gone before in gratitude for your abiding presence.
for us all. Those who attend 
are actually vaccinated, and I am most grateful for that. Are there any other announcements? Contrary to what it says in the bulletin, in the announcements, Sandy McGillis will be presiding, not residing, um, at Pastor's house when she is away in a couple of weeks. Um, we are still doing a collection for blessings in a backpack, as you can see. We have a cart here with some foodstuffs in it, so anything that you might feel comfortable bringing in, we'd appreciate. The Philibus event was a success, um, and your support over this last year has been just phenomenal. Thank you. Um, there's also um, a collection for school supplies for Salem Hyde Elementary that has been in the mailings as well. And last but not least, for those on council, Tuesday night is our council meeting. I have put a package in each of your mail slots in the office. That's Tuesday the 5th. Tuesday the 5th. That's the coming Tuesday. Correct. Also, just to let you know, though, I'll be here uh, next Sunday. The following Sunday, Ed and I will be taking a short vacation to travel to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for a veterans reunion. And we are very much looking forward to that. And though. Uh, Greg was scheduled to uh, preside in my absence. That is why Sandy McGillis from St. Paul's will be presiding here as well as at St. Paul's. And uh, this is a first for her coming to another church, but I know that you will all uh, welcome her uh, with open arms. Any other announcements? No, okay, well, then I invite you to stand for the blessing as you're able. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you all now and forever. Amen. 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 Our sending hymn is hymn number 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Now, I don't know this hymn too well, so I really need you to sing out nice and loud. Hopefully you know it. <laughs> 